So for iOS developers, Docker and Kubernetes are probably something you've heard about, but probably don't use in your day-to-day -day at all. We know it's new, but uh, the power of those technologies are the ability to basically create the infrastructure that you need that's specific to what you're building for your code. So you spend a lot less time dealing with operating systems, managing servers, having to install applications, you're really more focused on a little box of stuff that contains your code while you work on it. Docker is basically a super small container that holds just what you need to put your code in. Now in our case it's a little weird because it is Mac OS, but think of it as a Mac OS in a very specific condition ready to hold your code for what you need. And then the cool part about that is with Docker, I can say I want one to a million of those with a single type of a command and have them all spin up, uh, given that I have the infrastructure underneath, of course. When you layer on Kubernetes, it's kind of a, another layer of complexity in one regard, but it's a really powerful and cool layer of complexity because now, for example, if I'm building an iOS app, but it has uh, a database for my users where they keep their information or their high scores or whatever it is, um, I can deploy a group of machines like a, a web server and a database server and a whatever, a file server, all as a little service described by Kubernetes in a single command or in a little file. And then every time I want that, I just ask for it and it deploys it over and over and over and it scales it for me. So it really, it really gives a developer the power to kind of create the entire data center that they need to, to build their app, scale their app and do whatever they want. It, there is a little to learn, but Orca helps you a lot. We have a very solid help system that gives you examples and how to use commands. Um, Docker in general and Orca modeled after Docker is very developer forward and developer helping. So when you type in a command, it's going to kind of give you the list of things to do. If you're familiar with Mac OS and command prompts in any way, shape or form, you're used to bash shells and things like that and this is this will help you in that regard and once you get used to it the power of it is having single commands that do what take lots of clicks and lots of screens to do normally with other virtualization technologies there's a lot of great tutorials that already exist for kubernetes there's a lot of great tools that already exist to help you manage kubernetes clouds uh, and loop in things like monitoring or connect them to ci orchestration platforms if you're an iOS developer that never touches the CI infrastructure, some of the things you'll notice are faster builds and more reliable builds. And that's because of some of the power that Kubernetes brings around spinning up VMs, using short-lived VMs that uh, avoid problems related to statefulness or build artifacts that may build up on a Mac Mini that you have under the desk.